In this next video of creating templates slash workbooks in PebblePad, uh, continuing to show you the pieces of content that you can add, I um, want to focus on tables. As you can see, you can make tables with columns only, you can make with rows only, um, column and row late, uh, labels on both or just an individual cell. So whatever works best for you, whatever you're trying to capture, you have these options here. Um, what I think is is cool is I've, I've seen this be used as a running log, uh, an activity log. So you could say date event supervisor, for instance. Um, and the cool thing is when you go to properties, you can put as many columns, uh, as many rows as you'd like. Uh, but what you can do is click repeating rows. And so what that means is that each time that a student uh, or user inputs information into date, uh, say January 10th, um, they would start a new row um, right below it and it will keep going so that way uh, some if you don't have a uniform number of of rows that uh, you need information inputted for you can click repeating rows here um, as a way of uh, kind of keeping things keep things tidy for uh, both yourself and for your student. Also click um, the columns and rows. Uh, again, with the label, this is a place for you to put uh, some kind of, of titles. And these are things that you can input, um, have your students input information for, and you can add columns, uh, you can add rows, you can add columns, um, you can also do it this way in properties, and uh, here where you would put your, um, typically you put your title, to give it kind of an identifier, here we'll call it information form, and you can put further instructions or details here um, on properties. What you're able to do is uh, have a lot of different kinds of options that you can use to um, to make this information uh, as specific for what you're using it for your in your course for your students as possible. Here with include evidence, you can click that, and uh, this will ask students to. Um, not only just input the information up here, but this evidence tab, uh, students will be prompted to click on it and include either written reflections um, or uh, in uploading multimedia content, which can, as it says, give further evidence, like demonstrate uh, a certain experience that you're asking for in, uh, in this column and uh, this kind of table that you're using. I touched on hints, um, including hints in an, a previous video, but uh, to clarify again, a, there could be something in a table um, that is turned in to you uh, for an assignment by a student um, that may aptly reflect their experience, their skills that they've learned, um, and they would be able to <clears throat> put this component on their own portfolio. They'd be able to turn around to an employer, grad school, etc., and show, show someone their portfolio. Uh, you can hide the hint, which means all of the gaudy on that uh, information that's only pertinent for the student for that assignment, you can put that here um, to help them 
to, to give them the information that they need, but it's not pertinent to anyone else who is uh, would possibly see this assignment, would or see this um, this piece that of content that could end up on a student's portfolio. So you can have that hidden so that only the student can see it, but in the final version, it won't uh, it won't show up for the uh, so the student will be able to to use it going forward. Show empty fields when asset is viewed. Um, this cuts down by unclicking this. This cuts down on clutter. If there's all kinds of um, if, if there's any boxes that aren't filled in, um, this option, uh, the hint include hint option that I, I was talking about is on most pieces of content when you go to properties, not just tables. Um, and same thing as show empty fields. Um, most pieces of content, like for instance, the um, the radio button, the, the checkbox, the drop down menu. Uh, when you unclick this, um, it means the only thing you're seeing is the information that you've inputted. Uh, so say for instance, you give a multiple choice quiz. Um, when you are viewing the student's answer, if it's A, B, or C, um, all you see is um, is the answer that they selected. Um, and so the instructor view, you don't see an A, you don't see C, you only see B, um, as opposed to when it's clicked, B is bolded, but you still see A and C. It just, uh, it's just a little aesthetic tool that cuts down on clutter um, for the instructor and um, is again something the student will be able to could be useful to them as they take uh, they might take a piece of content and put it on a portfolio for later um, and then finally you can have these tables um, be marked as private um, or what's especially useful is completed by assessor um, this is something that means that only the instructor will be able to fill out the table um, as opposed to giving the table to a student to complete um, so maybe you have an example resource of a of a table that that you want to provide for your students um, by having completed by assessor, only you'll able to put information in, um, and the students is just it's uh, all they can see is the information. They can't put anything in the boxes. Um, I can see this being especially useful. In fact, it is when we're talking about rubrics, um, which will be in the next video.